Hello guys, in this a bit longer video I want to show you step by step how to create a pull request to some Laravel package, a real pull request to a real package. So I've been working on a few videos about Laravel translations package and then I've noticed one thing that could be optimized. So one of the classes in that package is import translations command and it has a feature called or function called import languages. So if we navigate to that there's an array of languages and if we scroll down at the end of that function there is this. So create language for each of the language in that array which fires too many queries to the database. So in this video I will optimize that so you will learn how to fire two queries instead of 100 queries here and then by the end of this video we will have a pull request, a real pull request to real package. I've just done it seven minutes ago as you can see. So you will learn step by step how to do that. I will fork the package, I will clone and make the changes and then submit a pull request. And also along the way I will show you two tools how to measure the amount of queries, database queries, in a non-visual environment. So on a visual web page you will probably use something like Laravel debug bar, but how to measure the amount of queries on artisan command. I will show you two ways to do that. All of that and more along the way in this video in a detailed way. Let's go. So first to make any changes to the package and to submit a pull request later we need to fork the package into our own github which is in my case Povilus Corp. So I click fork, github suggests to me that it should be Povilus Corp Laravel translations and I'm fine with that. Copy the main branch only, it may depend on the package settings and I click create fork. Great, now I have the fork here and now I need to clone the fork of the package into my repository. So here I am in my main composer JSON of my Laravel project where I use the Laravel translations package, the original one, and I need to replace this with my own cloned one. How to do that? We need to clone it down from Povilus Corp again and to do that I click code and I get the URL of the package. I copy that one and then I go into terminal on my own project. This is the terminal on the left hand side and then I go git clone paste the URL and then provide the folder to clone to. And in this case I will do packages Laravel translations like this. And look what happens now. It is cloned into a folder called packages translations. Let's close the terminal for now. Open the file tree and we have packages Laravel translations here. Next every package should have a service provider and we need to add that to our own service providers into config app of our Laravel application. So I've opened the packages and here we have Laravel translations service provider. So let's add exactly that Laravel translations service provider auto completed by my PHP storm. But here's an important thing. We need to replace this thing with our own source and we can do that in our composer JSON. If we scroll down there is auto load PSR4 here and in here we need to add that the namespace of out the box Laravel translations. This one would actually point to another folder. So out of the box Laravel translations like this would actually mean our own folder of packages Laravel translations src source. So now we're using our own forked version of the package instead of the original one. To finalize the switch we need to run composer dump autoload. Great, now as a proof that I'm actually using the local version let's try to change something here. In the console commands of import translation command for example in the handle method let's do dd working something like this and let's run artisan command php artisan translation import again console let's clear it up php artisan translations import and working great so now we can work on improving the package within our own fork test it and then push to the repository now it's time to get to the actual optimization to eloquent thing and let's remove that dd and in the handle method of that translation command there's import languages and that import languages has a big array of languages and at the bottom of that does this. So putting that into collection and then each creating a language which fires as many eloquent queries to the database 
as there are languages. In current case, it's 127 languages from what I remember, so 127 queries to the database. We can, of course, optimize that. First, how did I find out that there are many queries in the database? I will show you two tools to test the amount of queries from artisan command. Typically, if it was a web site, a web page, I would suggest to use Laravel debug bar, which shows the debug bar with the amount of queries. But in this case, it's artisan command. So how do you measure the queries here? The first tool is free and the second one is not free. The first tool is, if we scroll up our composer JSON, it's Laravel telescope. It's the official first party package from Laravel team themselves and it shows a lot of things, among those, the queries. So here I am in my telescope dashboard, queries are empty, I've emptied that intentionally and we will launch that command of translations import, intentionally deleting all the other or commenting out all the other functionality. It's irrelevant for us for now, import languages is what we're focusing on and let's launch it and see what telescope shows us. Successful command in the database we refresh and we have the languages here and in the telescope we have this. So as you can see there are hundreds of queries or one query for every languages but the downside of telescope here it doesn't show the amount the total count of queries. So that's why I went to another tool called Spati Laravel Ray which is not free. I'm not affiliated with that, I don't get paid for this video, but I sometimes use Ray myself locally. It's just for debugging, so you can debug a lot of stuff into your local application on my MacBook, and I think there's a Windows version as well. So I've installed that Ray already here in my Composer JSON, and then I can do, in the command, I can do Ray count queries, and then inside function with whatever you want to count. In this case, that count will count just this one function. It may be more functions here. And now, if we relaunch translations import again, and actually let's put the ray on the screen and enable float on top so it would be visible all the time, I launch translations import and ray immediately shows the amount of queries and total time. So 105 queries in total. This is the thing that we need to optimize. So now we get to the actual optimization and what can we optimize here? I will show you two optimizations. First thing is, instead of using language create, you can use language insert and provide the array of values, which is exactly this one. So instead of collecting and doing each, we can do just languages here outside of that collect. And this would do the same thing as this collection method model create function does not accept the array there's no create with the array but there is insert with array that said important difference insert is a database query builder function create is an eloquent function so in database query builder there won't be any events of eloquent automatically fired like for example it would not automatically set created at an updated at it would not fire any observers events or any eloquent magic that you have. It's just a query to the database. But in our case, it's totally fine because in the languages table, we don't have created at and updated at. Auto increments happens on the database level, so we don't need eloquent for that. So in our case, insert is a great optimization. Let's comment this out, save, and relaunch our command. Translations import. Again, it is successful in the database so we had 104 rows, refresh, 208, which means it is successful. And in Ray, we have two queries. So instead of hundreds of queries, we have two. Well, it's not one query because there's also a query before that insert. If we scroll up, there was schema has table check. So this is one query and then insert is second query. So at this point, some of you would say, great, optimized. Let's just push that change and move on. But what I've noticed here in the package, in the main handle method, if we scroll up, there's no check of whether the languages are already imported. So whenever you launch translations import, it will import languages every single time, 100 languages. That's why actually we have currently 
208 rows in the database and not 104. So we have duplicate languages. This is a bug in the package, but I will fix it along the way with this optimization. But how do we exactly do that? Let's scroll down again. So language insert, there's no insert or create or update or something. We need to check each record, whether it is in the database or not. And you could of course do again, go back to collect and then check if that is in the database and then insert or not. But that would be even worse optimization. So two queries for each languages. So in this case, I came up with this method. I would just copy and paste it from my notes to save you some time pasting the code. And this is what I came up with. First, we get all the languages from the database. Then we have the languages as array. We turn that into a collection and we use two collection methods. We reject all the records, all the languages that exist inside of DB languages contain. So we have one database query to get all languages, then process the filter with collections, and then getting it back to the array, and then getting back to our original optimization of language insert. But the thing is that languages are already filtered. So let's try it out. Let's comment that out. And now if we launch that, I assume they should stay the same 208 languages in the database. Nothing should be imported because of that filter in the code. Result, refreshing the database, 208. So no languages were duplicated. As a proof that it actually works, let's change one of the languages, for example, to ZZ Zulu. So change the code and try to re-import again and refresh the database. And we have 209 rows. So ordering by ID descending, we have Zulu with ZZ. So the filter is working correctly. So let's change it back to ZU and let's totally remove the old collection method in favor of the new one. And let's clean up before we would do a push and a pull request. So I return everything that it was commented out and remove our array like this. As a final check of the code changes before pushing, I'm using source tree. You can use any other Git client. I will open the file folder of packages translations, open and see what changes are actually made. So what we will push here, what we will commit is just instead of the collection, we will have our own new code. So we didn't change anything else, didn't accidentally delete anything. We can just push our code. I am used to doing that via terminal. So let's do packages and then Laravel translations, then do git status just to check if everything's okay. Then we do git add all the changes. Let's clear it up. Git commit message optimized languages import and we push to our main branch, git push origin main. Now we're pushing to our fork, not to the original package yet. So we're pushing, it is successful. Now, if we refresh the page on GitHub with our own fork, we just reload it. Now it says one commit ahead. And now you can click contribute and open pull request. I click that. Every package should have its own contributing guidelines. So you should read that before committing the pull request. GitHub would tell you automatically whether there are no conflicts with the main code. In my case, there are no conflicts. Here it is important to explain your pull request to the author. So it would take minimum amount of time for them to review and test and actually merge the changes. So I will just leave a friendly message. I've noticed that language import can be optimized from 100 plus DB queries to just one, or in fact, it's not one, just a few. And that's it. Create pull request. I click pull request. And now I'm redirected to the original package, which has pull requests. And my pull request is on the list. Now it's down to the author whether to merge my pull request or maybe comment something or maybe reject my pull request if they wish that is on their side. Let's see what happens. Actually, you can visit the package. Maybe by the time this video airs, that optimization is already merged and deployed to the new version of the package. We'll see. But for now, this is what I wanted to show you how to contribute to some package, then how to optimize eloquent query and a few things you have hopefully learned along the way. 
If you want to learn more about database optimization specifically, I have at least a few courses on my Laravel Daily Com. I can mention a few like Better Eloquent Performance is one, Laravel Refactoring Examples, How to Structure Databases in Laravel, and also recently reshot Eloquent the Expert Level. So subscribe to the Laravel Daily Com membership to get all of those courses and more premium tutorials. And also you support this YouTube channel so I can shoot these videos for free and see you guys in other videos.